Okay, today we're going to talk about functions. So a function a relation in which one element of the domain and we all we know that the, the domain means the x coordinate is paired with exactly one element of the range. Now we know that the range is our y coordinate. Now this seems like there's a lot of information in that one sentence, so what we really want to do is just identify functions. Okay, so a function has one x value, one y value. So if you substitute two into an equation, you're only going to get one answer out for y. Okay, so if I have y equals 2x plus 3, and I substitute 0 in for x, my answer is going to be y equals 3. So the point is going to be 0, 3. No matter how many times I input 0 into my x coordinate, I'm always going to get that 3. That's what this means. Exactly one x coordinate is going to give me exactly one y coordinate. So most of this unit here is going to be identifying functions, and there are certain ways that we can identify a function. Okay, so let's identify functions. Okay, the first way is on a table. First way is on a table. So I'm just going to make a quick table. And I'm going to put negative 3, 3, 2, okay, we want to figure out whether or not this table represents a function. You can only use the x coordinate one time in order for it to become a function. If I look at my table, I have used two twice. So if I use two twice, I'm not going to get two different answers. I'm going to stay and keep my same answer. So this is not a function because the x coordinate is repeated. Okay, the x coordinate is repeated. Okay, so that cannot be a function. It cannot be a function if the x coordinate, the y coordinate can be repeated, but the x coordinate cannot. Now, the second way that we can identify it is through a set of ordered pairs. Two, four, one, five, three, six, five, eight, and seven, ten. Okay, so we have a set of ordered pairs and we want to identify whether this is a function or not. The first and only thing you need to look at is the x coordinate. So I have a negative 2, 1, 3, 5, and 7. The x coordinate has not been repeated, so therefore this is a function. Okay, the domain is not repeated. Okay, the domain does not repeat. 
So this would be a function. All you're looking at is that x-coordinate. And if the x-coordinate is repeated, then it is not going to be a function. All right, the third way, I'm going to use a new piece of paper so I have space. Okay, C is going to be a graph. So I'm just going to put a couple of graphs up here, and I'll talk about how this works. Okay, this is a graph, by the way. It is called a parabola, and it is a graph for quadratic equations, which we will eventually get to. Okay, this is a graph for an absolute value. Okay. In order to determine whether a graph is a function, we have to do something called the vertical line test. Now use your vertical line test by using your pencil and you are going to come across the line, across your graph, with a vertical line. So my pencil or my pen is a vertical line. And I'm going to come across the graph. Okay, so use your pencil. Pass over the graph. If your pencil touches more than one point at a time, then it is not a function. So I'm going to pass over the first graph that I have here. Let's number that one, two, and three. So if I pass over the first graph, and my graph is that U shape, okay, that's my parabola. That's the graph of, a, of an equation. If I'm coming across, is my line touching more than one point at a time? No, it is not. So yes, this is a function. If I come across two... Now I'm coming across, here's my graph, it's that sideways V. If I'm coming across, am I going to pass through and touch more than one point at a time? I sure am. Those are going to be right above each other. So if I come across this way and I'm touching, then that means these two points are being touched at the same time. They're right in line with each other. So this is not a function. Okay? The third one, as I'm passing across, my line is rising from left to right. As I'm passing across, it is not touching more than one point. So this is, yes, it is a function. All right, the next one is an equation. So y equals, I'll use that other one, let's do 2x plus 3. If I substitute 0 in for x, I'm going to get y equals 2 times 0 plus 3. y equals 0 plus 3. y equals 3. No matter how many times I substitute 0 into that equation, the answer is always going to be 3. So no matter what, how many times that 0 is substituted, that 3 is always going to stay your answer. Therefore, yes, this is a function. I will never get a different answer than 3 when I substitute in that 0. Okay, and then our last one is something that we call mapping. Okay. And this is mapping. So I'm going to draw an oval here, an oval here. 
The first oval represents your x coordinates, and the second oval represents your y coordinates. Sorry, they're not a little straighter. I am not an artist. All right, I'm going to fill in some values for both. Okay, now with the mapping, they draw arrows from the first oval to the second oval, and that is matching it up to be an ordered pair. So I'm going to say 4 will go with 9, negative 1 is going to go with negative 6, 1 is going with negative 6, and 3 is going with 11. Now remember, your x-coordinate cannot be repeated. If it's repeated in an ordered pair, then it is not going to be a function. So what I like to do when I'm using the mapping is to change these to ordered pairs. Okay, so the first one is going to be negative 4, 9 put my brackets in. Okay, my second ordered pair is negative 1, negative 6. Third pair is 1, negative 6. And the fourth one is 3, 11. Now right back to that second example that we used earlier on is watching to make sure that the x coordinates are not repeated. So I'm going to underline negative 4, negative 1, 1, and 3. They are not repeated. Therefore, yes, this is a function. Now it's okay if you notice that the y coordinates have been repeated, but the x coordinates have not. That's okay. If that's the case, it's just that the x coordinates cannot be repeated. All right, I'm just going to talk one quick second about function notation. Okay, so we represent our linear equation as y equals 3x minus 5. Now, if they asked you to do this in function notation, it's no different. What it's going to do is replace the y with something that we say function of x is equal to 3x minus 5. So that means for any value of x that I substitute into that equation, I'm only going to get one solution. So let's just say that x is equal to 2. Then I would write this as the function of 2, because I'm replacing x with 2, is equal to 3 times 2 minus 5. Okay, so the function of 2 is equal to 3 times 2. I take the x's out of the equation, and I substitute in with the number 2. So f of 2 is going to be 3, or 3 times 2, which is 6, minus 5. So f of 2 is going to equal 1. So the ordered pair will be 2, 1. That would be your ordered pair. Okay, that would be the function. Okay, that's it. All right, so we talked about what is a function, and it's a relation that just has one input with one output. So you input the 2, you're only going to get out. In this case, I inputted a 2, and my only output is going to be a 1. It will never be anything different no matter how many times I substitute 2 into this equation, my answer is always going to be 1. It will never change. So for one input, you are going to get one output. And the, the three to four different ways that we just discussed on how to identify a function.